So, you know, it's kind of been a little bit since my last upload. Anyway, I finally remembered my YouTube password, and uh, here's what I've been working on for the past two months. It's a Space Invaders clone, but in my opinion, more advanced, mainly because it was made in the 21st century, and also the fact that it has different enemy types and uh, is also scriptable in Lua, which was my main goal for this project, to create a C program that could be scripted in Lua. And also, uh, it has a final boss fight, which is pretty hard, in my opinion, or I'm just bad at video games. Now, one might wonder what is the purpose of integrating a scripting language such as Lua into a C program, such as the Space Invaders clone that I showed you. There are a number of good reasons. Firstly, as you add more code to a project, the compiler has to do more work to convert it to machine code, and compile times increase, which can be annoying at times. As you see, um, more code means a bigger problem for the compiler to solve, which means that it would, of course, take more time as in computing. A bigger data set as input leads to a, well, longer computation time. It's just a fact of the world. Additionally, if I want to make a small change to some part of the project, this could result in needing to recompile the entire program, or at least a sizable part of it, which can be inconvenient as when you compile something, you can't really do anything to test it out or debug it, though some might use it as an excuse to slack off for a bit. Being able to add in features with uh, an external scripting language like Lua can make development easier as well and allow others to develop plugins and modifications to the application to extend it or make it better. Um, Lua is also a pretty simple language that has been used by many applications such as text editors, window managers, video games, video games, and even more video games. One of the great things about Lua is that it's quite simple. Um, the executable is small, it's easy to learn as a language, um, it only takes 5 seconds to compile on my machine, um, it only requires our standard library dependencies in C, which makes it quite portable across uh, systems, and well, it's just a great language overall. And one of the people that inspired me to uh, make this project was uh, this Javadex 9 video that dealt with uh, integrating Lua into C++. I thought it was pretty cool and I want to try seeing how I could apply that to something like a small game like the, well, Space Invaders clone that I'm talking about in this video. And overall, it's a pretty good video. It helped me learn a lot and you should check him out. Um, and also, I looked at the Lua documentation too, so yeah. Overall, that was how I learned this, um, how to integrate Lua into C. It wasn't actually incredibly difficult to learn, actually. The API is also quite simple, which I guess is another virtue of Lua. Anyway, here's a rough idea how you'd integrate Lua into a C program. Um, I'm just going to scratch the surface as I'm still new to this, and well, uh, there's better tutorials out here, but this is just what I've learned, so obviously include the Lua headers. Then we want to create a Lua state, which will just keep track of the, well, current state of the data that Lua is manipulating. Lua L new state. And, well, the Lua state is typically a capital L. Then we, well, Lua L libs, open the Lua libraries. Um, then, Uh, here's the test.lua file. I'm just going to put lua l do file l, and then we can just do uh, test.lua. Mm, well, and then we of course want to clean up. Um, Lua test .c .lua test and make sure to link with Lua. Oh yeah, uh, we need to link with the math library as well. And then, hello world, as we can see. And of course, is Lua. And then, of course, let's say we want to define a function in here. And let's give an argument x and uh, 
of course, um, if we want to call this from C, we can do Lua git global L, and then we put in the name, which is hello. And then if Lua is function L negative one, Lua push integer. Let's say we want to print it out 10 times, right? We push an integer onto the Lua stack. Lua p call. I'll uh, do that. Uh, the number of, of arguments, that's one. Uh, the number of results, we don't return anything. So there, and then I don't care what we do on error. So I think this should work. See, it gets called that many times, and well, if we want uh, to define a function, we define a Lua state. Well, we define a function in C that we want to send as a Lua API function, so I don't know. Um, uh, let's say I want to do something that prints out foo like several times. So we first have a, to have an in, integer return type for this function. This is a number of return values that we'll have in Lua. Um, I'm not going to have any. Well, uh, we need to have an argument for the Lua state. Um, actually, we're going to return one. We're just going to return back the argument. Um, Lua to integer L one, I believe. This is the this will just grab an integer from the top of the stack because well when we call this function we uh, get the thing and then for int i equals to as less than well yeah wait we need to store that I'm just gonna call that x for now um, we're not gonna have any coherent names um, and make sure it includes standard input output print f foo and well we're just gonna L, we push it right back onto the stack because actually you know what let's do let's multiply it by two so um, then we do Lua register with L and then and the name of the function, which is, uh, let's just say, API foo, and then we give it a function pointer, and then we can call it in, let's make sure that it compiles, and then API foo 10, Val print val okay. hello 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 and it gets called up there and well yeah well we call the hello stuff down here and then we do the little file up here Anyway, once I had a rough idea on how Lua worked, I could start hacking together my game in C. Here's a quick demo of how I could use Lua for the game. Um, in this example, I, well, I had a function for spawning enemies into the game in Lua, and Lua could control where the enemies were placed, and that would allow me to, um, well, basically create custom waves pretty easily, and, well, um, allow for extensibility there, and... Well, um, in this example, I make an error in the shape of the enemy, and then I can change the shape in Lua and then rerun the game without having to recompile it, which is pretty cool. This is a demo of a second type of alien that I added, and adding um, new enemy types and AIs to the game was pretty easy, as coding enemy AI was not particularly difficult with uh, Lua, and, well, yeah, it allows me to have much more complicated behavior without making the C code too confusing. 
Oh yeah, and to make the game fancier, I added a nice menu screen that I'm actually kind of happy with how it looks. Um, yeah, I kind of uh, just stole the text from my Terraria clone game and just put it like in that style, but it looks okay in my opinion. And if you suck at video games like me, here's a game over screen. Anyway, here's a quick tour of all the waves and enemies in the game. So anyway, we have the standard alien. I um, modeled this one after the, well, iconic Space Invaders alien. Um, different shape in a triangle. Um, there's the pink alien, which um, hopefully I can get it to show its attack. Basically, it dives bomb you like that, and then it shoots you like that. And your goal is to either stop that bullet or kill the alien before it hits you. Um, what other waves? Um, more pink aliens, or... Is that purple? That should be a fun argument in the comments. Anyway, um, th definitely purple alien. Um, this one uh, bounces around the screen like that, and then they shoot homing bullets at you. Um, this is the slime alien. It bounces around the screen. Um, yeah, well, it doesn't shoot any bullets at you, but the entire point of this level is to avoid it. So. Um, well, you have to kill it, um, and if you're they're traveling downwards and you hit them with a bullet because they're um, slimy and bouncy, they bounce back up or something? I don't know, man. Anyway. Mm. This is the other circlish alien. I call them circle aliens because I have no other good name for them. They just like move around the screen randomly and just shoot bullets at you. Um, they, they're kind of tough, but... Not that um, difficult. Uh, yeah, I've been killed by them a few times. I'm not sure how to describe the difficulty of this game. Um, this is my favorite wave. This is like the square aliens, and they move in a circle pattern. Um, I think their attack pattern looks cool, and, well, I think they take three hits to kill. Um, hopefully I can kill one of them. Okay, this, yeah, this way, I'm not good at this game. Okay, come on, man. I can, I can kill one of these guys. And I died. And I got new high score of zero. As you can see, I am just wonderful at this game. Mm. Uh, the star alien, they shoot fireballs at you, and um, they do that attack. They just follow you and just dive bomb you out of the sky. So you're basically meant to dodge them. Um, there's a shielded alien, which, um, if I can get to them. Ah. Ah. Okay, uh. Nope, they drop bombs on you that explode, and, well, don't get caught in the blast radius. You can shoot the bullets out of the sky. Um, they can also be, well, when you hit the bullets, you destroy your own bullets, so the aliens can also block your attack. And, jeez, those bombs scare me. But, anyway, oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, this game gets uh, nightmarish at times, if that's the right way to describe it. Obligatory nightmare mode uh, this is the infinite mode where um, every wave is just randomly generated so have fun uh, on an unrelated note for the infinite mode um, when I was generating the shapes I was too lazy to come up with some of them so I asked uh, chat GPT to generate some for me um, that's the final boss these are the bomb aliens and whatever the heck these eye aliens are they just orbit you occasionally and these bomb aliens, they kind of like blow up on you. So you have to stay out of the blast radius. Uh, that's the UFO alien. Um, they shoot lasers at you and have like 10 hit points. So they're kind of like a mini boss almost. If you get hit by those lasers, you die. I think that's pretty much all the aliens in this game. Um, anyway, here's a quick tutorial on how to add a custom enemy to this game. Uh, so what we want to first do is go to uh, res slash scripts. 
Um, you could probably do this in a GUI like in the file manager on Windows and use something like Notepad or Notepad++ to edit the Lua files, or maybe you got a Lua text editor of your choice. Anyway, uh, be warned though, um, this game does not have error checking at all because I was too lazy to put that in, and well, I mostly made this as a fun demo to learn the Lua API, so uh, I probably should have included it anyway, but oh well. Mm. Prefabs.lua, this is where we define templates for the stuff. So for example, um, we have a player template and it takes the script here and then it takes an image here and then that's the image that it has when it um, appears. Anyway, um, let's edit enemies and then test enemy.lua. What we want first to do is define a module in this case, let's just go with test enemy, so, boom. Anyway, um, no need to require or import this anywhere, as this is um, done by the game when we create a prefab. Um, test enemy dot start uh, game object, or uh, depending on what you want to call it, maybe self. I'm just going to go with self, even though I, in literally every other part of the game I use game object, but whatever. Um, I think self, now that I think about it, might be better because it this is the argument that refers to itself. Uh, function test enemy dot update. Uh, update is run every frame for the enemy and basically updates the values. Um, start. Uh, just um, just run once and gives values to the enemy. So I guess you could almost think of it like a constructor. Anyway, self uh, game that this is like a user data pointing to uh, like game stuff like um, I don't know a timer, um, other game objects. Anyway, um, it's a little bit weird to explain. Anyway, um, there are there's documentation in. The, in, on my website and you can read it and I'll link it below. Anyway, time passed. This is amount of this is time passed is the amount of time that passed in the frame. So um, this can be used to um, move the enemy uh, without um, having to worry about frame rate. So it should always move the same distance over the same amount of time. Um, anyway. It can also be used to uh, update an uh, internal timer for the enemy, which could have, you know, fun things like determining when the enemy should shoot. Um, test enemy, uh, I can't spell that, on collision. Um, this is run whenever the enemy is hit by a bullet, so um, we basically pass an argument for it the user pointer to the enemy like we all do for all of these functions and then we have game which um, is the same as up here a uh, user data pointing to the well game data if that well if that's the correct term for it anyway I don't particularly feel like writing this stuff from scratch so here's the enemy.lua function so uh, here's the object uh, so we have a function for a set object score which basically sets the amount of points you get when you kill the enemy um, this is the number of animation frames the enemy has this is well the size of the enemy I believe sprite size is defined to be 64 pixels uh, this is the velocity of the enemy so this is going 32 pixels to the right per second so anyway, I'm just gonna copy this over And I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna set it to a totally reasonable value. Um, we can then grab the object's position with these functions, and well, we can update the timer with the these functions. Anyway, so um, I think the name of this function should make sense. Uh, get object position. So I've got to change that to self. Here we can do health equals to enemy get object health uh, self 
for here, uh, when we're hit, we want to say uh, if we return false, then that means that we uh, don't delete it from the screen. Uh, return true, that means it should be deleted from the screen. Um, health is equal to health minus one, so um, decrement health when the enemy is hit by a bullet. Is, so um, let's say we want to delete the enemy when the health is less than or equal to zero. So we can do something like that. And then um, we can then uh, grab the user data that points to the visual effects list. And the visual effects list is meant for things like explosions, um, um, stars in the background, whatever. Those are like the only two things that are in there, though, because this game is kind of simple at the moment. So anyway. We have uh, visual effects. Um, uh, do note that um, if I am passing a user data to any function and it's nil, the game will not be happy and it will seg fault on you, which is questionable design also. So yeah, anyway, if health is less than or equal to zero, then we do that. We just spawn an explosion to um, show the player that they killed the enemy. Anyway, um, move the enemy. So uh, this code just um, moves it, and um, uh, well, it bounces off the screen. So uh, yeah, this just bounces the x coordinates, and then well, reverses direction the moment we hit the edge of the screen, which is like 320 pixels from the center, and well, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm, and then here we can have code that tells the enemy to shoot. Um, so basically, uh, every second we um, check roll, uh, I guess, uh, figurative dice using the math.random function from Lua. And then um, if it's less than 0 0.1, so 10% of the time, the enemy will spawn a prefab, which we can do with prefabs to add prefabs. So anyway, this we get user data to a list, which in this case is the enemies. As I put enemy bullets in the same list as the enemies list, as that's what the game checks for. If the player touches anything, the enemies list, and then the player dies, and well, yeah, it makes kind of sense. And anyway, so it spawns at X and Y, which is a position of the enemy, which we defined up here. And then we have the enemy bullet, which is the prefab for a uh, an enemy bullet and then and well we can well reset the timer mm, now let's say we want some custom behavior I don't know maybe we want the Y to be uh, it bounce around the screen kind of like uh, DV well yeah we want it to bounce around the screen in and well we also so therefore we need to do something like this if y is less than you know, we gotta just reverse the stuff and then we've got to add our prefabs with the prefab that prefab function, so um, I'm just gonna copy paste that, and um, I'm just gonna say we call it test enemy res test enemy dot make sure it's rest slash scripts because um, it's run from the perspective of the executable, and the executable's working directory is um, it sees the script in res dot scripts, so make sure of that um, image. Um, so anyway, um, make sure have a, I'm just gonna do 64 by 16. Um, so basically, uh, with four frames of animation, we should have um, four frames. Uh, well, four 16 by 16 frames, that I meant to say. Anyway, here's our totally not sus art that we can export to the directory res slash images in the Galaxy Invaders uh, folder, so. I'm going to do that. Uh, 
And then we go to uh, spawn wave Lua, and then I'm just gonna throw it down here. We do function enemies. The enemy enemies is the user data to the well enemies list. So anyway, I'm just gonna copy this over. I'm just gonna make a basic rectangle. And as you can see, they work. I didn't get the X and Y. And hopefully they work. Come on. Boom. The the these totally not sus aliens, um, they give you four twenty points when you kill them and um, kill them in one shot if you want to um, increase their health uh, do enemy set object health self for I guess so now it should take uh, four hits to um, kill them so uh, let me try killing one of them uh, I should probably set the health down here. Anyway, um... four hits and they're dead so yeah um, get creative um, as I showed you there aren't very good warning messages or any good error messages so I do warn you of that um, but it's fun um, it could be kind of enjoyable but anyway that's it anyway that's it for this video if you enjoyed it um, thank you and um, have a good day